Good morning and welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Morning Show. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you joining us this morning uh, here on this Tuesday. We were not here yesterday. As you may remember, it took me a while to get my notes together. We had an outage here at the building, so now we're getting back on track. want to let everybody know that tomorrow's show will be a remote show. We're going to be doing something a little special uh, with regard to the feature story for this Thursday's paper. We're going to be talking about home sales with a local realtor and broker, uh, and then she and I are going to be sitting down for a long-form podcast, so please be on the lookout for that tomorrow. Going to be in a little different location for the morning show, uh, and then going to jump into talking to her about some of the real estate trends. It was a big year for Livingston Parish. But getting into your traffic and weather, uh, O'Neill Lane backed up all the way to Pete's Highway on I-12. We're getting back into that work workflow, those work delays. However, I'm pretty clear elsewhere because school is still not in session, so most people are able to get pretty clear on the interstate. However, you are looking for at delays from O'Neill all the way back past Pete's Highway. It's currently 51 degrees, 62 is your high today, looking at a 35 degree overnight low. So please remember, not going to quite be freezing, but protect those plants, those pipes, and those pets uh, from those, oh, excuse me, from uh, the weather elements as it will get cold overnight for the next couple of days. Going to start off with a little uh, local community news, lifestyle news. Usually we say this for last, but we do want to talk about it early. While it didn't quite work out the way the Saints wanted it to against the Vikings on Sunday, Lane Hardy uh, did open up with the National Anthem. He was selected to do that, the American Idol and Livingston Parish native. He did a great job. Uh, that video is on YouTube. Uh, the Saints have released it uh, as well as Lane himself. So if you want to go check that out, uh, please do. But he got to sing the National Anthem on Sunday. He did a great job. Jumping back into the news, we want to wrap up uh, the last show I did. I would have done the whole top 10 yesterday, but we've just got too much to cover. So I'm going to talk about the top three real quick. Uh, number three was Dakota Terrio. If you'll remember, he uh, murdered some friends here in Livingston Parish and then went and murdered his family, his mom and dad, uh, in Ascension and then fled to Virginia where he was caught. He was actually, uh, yesterday, Monday, get, finally given a trial date of all, in August of this year. Uh, that was the soonest that they could get a jury trial date together. However, it will be, uh, that that's still subject to change based on the, the time and availability of representation, of course, uh, in Ascension at this time, uh, he st Dakota still does not have representation. He is an indigent uh, defend defender, which means that he has uh, he doesn't have enough money to afford a lawyer. Uh, number two was Dennis and Cynthia Perkins. Of course, this is a uh, former sheriff's lieutenant and a former teacher at Westside Junior High who did some pretty unspeakable things. Were recently indict indicted before the Christmas holidays uh, for on 150 counts. Uh, mostly about child pornography, rape, uh, just a couple of terrible people. They will be uh, looking for their court dates coming up. Also, before the holiday, uh, Cynthia did file for divorce, said she had been receiving threats and, and you know uh, nasty messages uh, through various channels from her husband. So she's looking to separate from him uh, here before their trials come up. Number one was the Comet Diversion Canal getting full funding and moving forward with sort of a 1A being the Darlington Reservoir becoming uh, a huge piece of the of the chatter uh, with regard to large-scale drainage in the area. Uh, a presentation made to the Comet River Diversion Task Force uh, said that it could have affected the Denham Springs Watson area by up to seven feet, uh, which turns 2016 into a non-event. Uh, so it will be interesting to see how that goes forward. However, uh, back in the late 80s, the project was slated at maybe about $180 million. It is now skyrocketed in over a billion is the price tag that's been attached to that. So not entirely sure how they're going to move forward with that project, considering that funding uh, not necessarily available. They are also in the early stages of the feasibility study for the Darlington Reservoir. It's a three-year time slate. They're currently just completed year one. So there's still two more years of feasibility uh, before they'll even really begin discussing trying to go to Congress and look for funding for that. So it has. they've begun to talk about it in a more realistic light, but there's still many years before something like that would appear. But we, we did say that the Comet becoming fully funded and constructed starting was big enough uh, considering the money that Livingston Parish residents have paid in and the the effect it would have had I mean it still would have affected two feet or so in the Denham Springs 
uh, and uh, Watson areas. I mean, that, you know, that, that could have changed some lives. So uh, it's a good thing that that has started. And it's a good thing that uh, more regional and large scale drainage is being uh, discussed. On Thursday, the school board uh, will be discussing the resignation of Buddy Mincy Jr. as he moves to House District 71 or state representative. He'll begin his first session here in a couple of weeks, uh, but uh, Buddy will have to be replaced. He is in District 5, which is the southern portion of the Denham Springs School District. There are three members there. School Superintendent Joe Murphy believes that probably one of those two, uh, that would be Ms. Ms. Jan Benton or Mr. Bradley Harris, will put up the nomination for his replacement. Then the full board will vote on that and then move forward. Uh, so we'll see uh, who that is on Thursday. Walker High announced uh, at the end of the school break or the winter break that they are going to try a new pilot program for cell phone use on campus. This is not necessarily a new program. It's a pilot program for Walker High School. Uh, There's some other schools that have uh, something similar attached, but Walker was the first to formally announce public uh, that they were going to allow students to bring cell phones on uh, on school campus during the day. Uh, of course, uh, you know, and, and I hate to be this way, but I've got a kid uh, in high school at Denham Springs High School. Most of these kids bring their, their phones to school. And for, for a lot of them, it's not just about being distracted or anything like that. Two parents working want to know where their kid is after school, uh, maybe have to get to work, that sort of thing. Uh, so there are reasons for kids to bring cell phones. So they're trying to integrate new policy. That would be the school system as well as individual schools. Uh, that takes that into account. The kids are going to bring their cell phones to school. Uh, so there are going to be red, yellow, and green zones. Green zones are before and after school, as well as in the hallways in between class. Now, that does not include office space, um, <clears throat> excuse me, bathrooms, that sort of thing. If they get caught in any of those places with a phone, uh, the phone will be confiscated. There are red zones as well, which include the front office, uh, any school, any uh, classroom where a teacher says they can't use it, that sort of thing. So still going to be enforcement rules for use of cell phone outside of the designated areas or the designated times. Uh, and of course, one of the major red zones is kids in their car uh, that are leaving. If they see them on the phone, they're going to pull them over uh, and take the phone. So it, it'll be interesting to see how that pilot program works. They're going to give it a semester, uh, kind of come together, uh, think it over, uh, see if they can see if they can or want to make any changes and then move forward. Uh, we had a conversation with Principal Spencer Harris of Springfield the other day, and he said they, they don't have the red, green, and yellow, but they do uh, basically have cell phone designated times and areas, uh, and that they really haven't had a whole lot of problems with it in about a year that it's been in place. Uh, they put a lot of uh, restrictions and responsibilities on the students, and as long as they can keep up with those, uh, they are allowed to use cell phones on campus. Tom Murray, it's a big day for the Livingston Parish school system. Tom Murray, who is an accredited author uh, about educational uh, pathways and pathways to the future for education, will be speaking at Walker High today, two sessions, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. It is a giant educational day for teachers, a giant in-service day, which is why school starts tomorrow, Wednesday. And uh, they'll be talking about you know ways to be uh, more involved, more innovative, and more caring as a teacher and how to adjust your workspace to match that. So they'll be talking about that this morning uh, at Walker High. The first session starts at 8.30, second session starts at 1. When uh, schools are not at Walker High to hear the speaker, they or these teachers, they will be at designated regional campuses around the parish uh, going through uh, con continuing education and that sort of thing. Each school site is offering uh, 12 courses over three different hours, so 36 courses total. Uh, of course, you can't take all 36. You can only take three, uh, but they will last for a certain amount of time, and you go through, uh, do what you need to do for your skill set, and move on. So sort of trying to develop a higher sense of community and get a good speaker in front of these teachers. So that's what the administration's after, the school board administration. Um, and again, that'll be at Walker High. Mr. David Gray will be at that event this morning and then kind of going around to some of these schools to see how that, what they're called ed camps uh, happen. So sports, tons of it happened over the holidays. I cannot possibly cover it all here uh, in, in you know, the, about the 15 minutes we have together in the morning, please go check out www.livingstonparishnews.com. 
backslash sports, there was just a ton uh, of, of tournaments that these basketball teams were in, uh, tournaments that these soccer teams were in. William Weathers and Rob DeArmond did a great job. We also appreciate our stringers. Tons of coverage. The 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 they kept the interest high over the holidays because David Gray and myself not a whole lot going on in the news and community news holes, uh, but tons of stuff going on in sports. So please, 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 if you've got a kid or a grandchild or a friend or you know your 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 son's girlfriend or your daughter's boyfriend play any kind of sports, go check it out. Tons of coverage. www.livingsinparishnews.com backslash sports. Also want to give a shout out and a thank you to Mr. Jonathan Malis, who not only went to the Dome on Sunday to get pictures of Mr. Lane Hardy, as well as pictures of the Saints game, but also went to Atlanta and got pictures of the LSU-Oklahoma game. Again, you can check those out at www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash sports. We talked a little bit about Springfield earlier. A couple of things happening over that way. Springfield Elementary got a new American flag from the Veterans of Foreign Wars. They thank them for that. The Bulldog Ducks Unlimited Club at Springfield High School uh, went to Fontenot Farm and learned about firearm safety as well as dog training. So they got a little bit of both. Uh, you know, a little bit. <laughs> both of those going into a little bit of duck hunting, right? Uh, so. Uh, could, trying to get those kids outdoors, trying to get them to do some things that are productive uh, and trying to get them out of the house uh, during the holiday. So it's good activity for them. Last but certainly not least, uh, we talk about these guys every year and they continue to do this show. The Tribe Parish Ballet over the Christmas holiday again did their version of the Nutcracker. It's always a lot of fun. Mr. David Gray was there uh, to cover the event and do take some photos. Uh, so it's, it, it really is a good show. Uh, if, if you want to mark your calendar now for next year, I uh, highly recommend you check it out at least once. Uh, they do put on a, a really great program. One last time, let's talk about your traffic. O'Neill Highway backed up to, uh, or O'Neill Lane backed up to Pete's Highway. I was about to reverse those. Uh, getting back into that workflow. Time to get back to work. So we're going to have some delays there on I-12. Also some delays uh, backed up at Sherwood. A, a small amount, not too bad. Still no school going on, so not a whole lot of traffic there. There is some traffic in and around Walker High School. As we mentioned, those teachers are going to be converging on that campus uh, to take in that program this morning. So uh, we do hope they enjoy that. It's currently 51 degrees, 62 degrees is your high, 35 degrees is your overnight low. Please remember, protect your pipes, your pets, and your plants. Not quite freezing, but it's going to be cold enough. Uh, always good uh, to take a little bit of caution when you're only three degrees away from uh, losing some plants, uh, freezing some pipes, and putting your pet through something that they don't necessarily have to go through. One last time, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you joining us on this Livingston Parish News Morning Show. I am back in the booth. Please remember tomorrow we're going to be doing a remote set for the morning show. Going to be trying something a little different. Jumping in on Thursday's feature for the paper, which is talking about home sales in 2019. They hit a level that has not been seen in, in ever, and it... it going to be diving in on that why why this particular broker thinks that's happening what the market trends are that kind of thing so looking forward to that then she and i are going to be jumping into a long form podcast after that so please be on the lookout we are also back in the booth going to be back regular now that we're here after the holiday please remember that the paper is our or the news is on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays. We are also online at www.livingstonparishnews.com. We, you can also find us. We do have an app. Hope you have a great Tuesday. It's looking like we're going to get one more beautiful day of weather. Might be getting some more clouds coming up later in the week, but it's still a beautiful day. Please have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow. <music>